Alright guys, I've had a lot of people that have requested uh, some soldering and there's a lot of people that have trouble with it and there's just as many how-to videos on this as there is soldering irons in the world. Uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of show y'all how I do it. Uh, I've been soldering for quite a few years and I figure, you know, I can show you guys some. I must be doing something right because all of my solder joints hold. So, what we're going to be working on is my little 400 motor that come out of the Razor. Uh, this is an 1800 milliamp 3S battery and it needs ends. And then I've got a speed control here that come with the bullet connectors, the Dean's plugs, and all the uh, heat shrink. Uh, one thing you want to be careful about, these batteries do come with juice in them don't let those don't let those wires touch so right now I'll get everything out and get it laid out here and show you how we're gonna go about doing this alright so now that I've got everything set up uh, kinda show you some of the tools that I'm gonna be using I've got two pairs of pliers and both of them have rubber bands on them and it's for a specific reason I don't want to be holding these Dean's plugs whenever I start soldering them. They're going to get extremely hot. Now these aren't actual Dean's plugs. These are a knockoff from China that come with the uh, speed control. So what you want to do is if you're soldering the positive terminal you want to clamp it like this and then set it down and that way you can get your iron in there and uh, solder the wire onto the top. If you're going to be soldering the negative terminal if I can keep a hold of it you want to just take and make sure there's some teeth on the inside of your inside of your pliers that way it can grip onto it and now you can set it down and you can do the negative side of it so uh, the first thing you want to do just because these things do melt if uh, if you heat them up too much take the male and the female and go ahead and plug them together what that's going to do is it's going to keep keep it to where you can plug these in uh, if you actually do start to melt the end of it so one of the other things you're going to need is a soldering iron uh, I'm using the Hakko 936 and I've got a about a medium tip on the actual iron itself uh, the handle number is 908 and yeah, turn it around for you there uh, and this is it's an excellent little soldering iron uh, I've used it for two years and it's never failed me. I have broke the handle one time and had to replace it. Um, the, other, the other things you're going to need, obviously you're going to need your pliers. This is just a baking sheet that I've got uh, turned upside down. And whenever you do your bullet connectors, you can hold them with the pliers. But I've got this uh, nut driver here, or Allen driver, and it's got a hole in the top. And it just happens to be just the right size to stick them in there and what I'll do is I'll take my take my pliers and clamp onto it and that way it can't roll around so well uh, the first thing we'll do is go ahead and uh, solder the Dean's connector onto the speed control now one thing I forgot to cover uh, whenever you look at your Dean's connectors if you look at them the Dean's is going to make like a little T uh, with the terminals. The top of the T is going to be your positive. This one's always going to be your negative. So remember that because if you get them backwards you can start blowing some stuff up. Alright you can see here that uh, I've set the speed control onto, uh, onto the deal and I've got it propped up with a pair of pliers. You want metal under here because the, uh, the solder will destroy any surface that is not metal. Uh, I can prove that fact. Now, you're going to need some solder. And what I use is I buy it by the pound of Radio Shack. It's just 60 40 solder. You don't really need it this thick, but that's just what I got. So, and I've, I've had this roll for oh, five or six years now. So, you can tell I don't really do a lot of soldering, but I do do quite a bit. Uh, my soldering iron I have set on about 700 degrees and which is I found it to be like the optimal temperature now you're gonna want whenever you do your soldering you're gonna want to have a sponge 
and the hackos come with a sponge and you want it, uh, want it to be wet and that way you can clean your tip off. Uh, this is 6040 rosin core solder and if you leave that rosin on your tip it'll just eat your tip away so we don't want that. What you want to do is you always want to tin the end of these uh, these wires so what I do is I just I tin the tip of my iron clean it off that way I've got a nice nice clean surface and then I'll put the iron up underneath the bottom of it and then just start slowly applying solder and eventually it will tin that wire and then do that for both sides alright now that we've got the uh, speed control soldered or uh, tinned we can go ahead and start working on our on our Dean's plug now your battery is always going to be the female end the speed control will always be the male the male is always the smaller of the two on the body yeah, go figure it's nature so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with a negative so we need to grab our little deal just like that right there now I don't ever scuff these up and I never had a problem uh, I'm hoping you guys will be able to see this pretty well if not let me know and I'll uh, I'll try to do a close-up of what I'm going to do here basically same thing clean your tip apply solder you want a nice nice clean edge and then what I do is I lay my solder right on the connector and then I'll put my iron down there kind of run it around and then it's tinned now I have been doing that for years and I have never once had a problem with a, with a cold solder joint so now obviously you're going to need some heat shrink you know you know red red black black or I guess that heat shrink is more of a pink I like to try to keep my wires straight so what I'll do is I'll grab it like this if you got real sensitive fingers you might want to grab this wire with a uh, pair of pliers grab your soldering iron tin it you've already got both these areas tinned then you'll just apply heat wait for it to melt both pieces and then just hold it on there you'll see it whenever it's uh, a liquid it'll be kind of a glossy shiny coat and once you see that dull area start going over it then you can kind of grab it and pull onto it and see if it's all uh, nice and seated and whether or not you've uh, got what's called a cold solder joint which is bad alright so now we're going to do the positive and it's the exact same method tin it lay the solder down on the connector and there it is now on this one I twisted my connector this way so I want to bring my speed control up that way as well and then it's, just, it's the same procedure and it goes that fast so as you can see I've got two pretty decent solder joints you want to wait for them to cool a little bit and what you'll do slide your heat shrink up grab a lighter or in my case Chevy Racing Zippo and a hair dryer heat gun something like that will work too and just uh, heat shrink them down my camera's not wanting to focus on it but that's it as far as soldering the speed control now we're going to go ahead and get on into the battery one thing that I cannot stress enough is you do not want these two wires to touch uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the uh, with the positive because as you can see on here this positive terminal is further to this outside now on this one the terminal is further to the inside and so I can put the wire on the outside now I want to start with the positive on this one because I want the wire to go on the inside of this it just it makes for a cleaner line and it's purely uh, personal preference if you don't want to do it this way by all means do not do it this way uh, 
it's just it's what I have always done again I grab it with my pair of pliers and have it sitting in there that way it doesn't move around on me if you have a pair of third hands uh, you can get them at any like hobby st uh, hobby store or hobby lobby or something like that it's an excellent excellent way to do this so continue wire same procedure as before I've already got my uh, my wire tinned you want to pull that negative back and get it out of the way first you don't want to forget your you don't want to forget your heat shrink put your heat shrink on both wires that way you will not forget it I have forgotten it so many times and then we'll just put this on and I won't bore you with this I'll go ahead and skip ahead to whenever I'm done alright uh, I wanted to come back real quick and just show you uh, before I put this negative on one safety measure you're going to be in here real close to touching uh, the positive to the negative so go ahead and take your heat shrink and put it up over your positive terminal and go ahead and heat shrink that one on now that way there is no chance that you're going to short this battery out as you guys know lipos are they're pretty sensitive they do not like uh, to be shorted out if you do uh, you can cause a, a pack to puff up you can cause a pack fire and yeah we none of us want that so I'll be back in here in just a second alright guys as you can see we've got both of our ends uh, soldered on we've got our heat shrink on there and they plug together real nice They pull apart you always want to grab the bodies of them to pull them apart and never grab just the wires to yank them apart and we got the heat shrink on there covering the terminals real nice so we know we're not going to get any shorting and so I'm going to go ahead and set those out of the way since this already has the bullet connectors pre-soldered onto it uh, what we're going to do is we're going to solder them on, onto this motor here so let me uh, get everything set out and I'll be right back alright guys uh, you can see in here uh, there's a little hole inside that bullet connector now that's going to serve two purposes one is going to allow you to get your soldering iron on the outside of it to where you can actually melt the solder that's on the inside a little more efficiently it'll melt a little faster that way it won't get as hot and also it's going to create a place because it's hard to get sandpaper in there to scuff that up uh, it's going to create a little cavity for the solder to hold on to so that your wire doesn't your wire doesn't pull out uh, now obviously you've got uh, three pieces of heat shrink tubing those are about twice as long as you're going to need and then we've got my handle with my little hole I'll show you that you know all I do is just take and push them in there just enough to where you know I can get a soldering iron on it from the side and it won't it won't come loose so give me just a second and I will be back all right guys uh, first thing you want to do whenever you set this up is you want the hole to be on whatever side the holes over here on the right for me I'm right-handed and that's where I'm going to be putting my soldering iron uh, you want to do the same put it on if you're right-handed put it on the right side if you're left-handed put it over here put the hole over there on the left side so what I do is I just tin the tip of my tip of my iron and I'll set it right there on that hole and then I'll put my solder down in there and I'll melt it in until the cup is about half full now first thing we need to do that I forgot all about is you need to cut your heat shrink tubing in half because they give you way more uh, than you could ever possibly need on a single terminal and slide it on your motor then you'll come back and obviously we've already tinned, uh, tinned the wire come back you know, uh, heat up, heat up the solder on the, uh, through that hole on the side of the connector. Stick your plug, you know, wire down inside the plug, and just hold it there. You're not really going to be able to see it like you did on the Dean's connector, but let me see if I can get it. I'm not touching it; it's hot. Uh, let me see if I can get the uh, camera to focus in on it. That way, you kind of. I don't think you can really see inside there, but you get the idea you want a nice solid joint and 
I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these other two and I'll be right back all right guys I wanted to come back real quick and just show y'all you don't have to put the heat shrink tubing on these bullet connectors beforehand because as long as your soldering job up here is okay you can just take and slide these over the bullet connector so there's no need to you know put this heat shrink if you forget it it's not a big deal so I'll be back here in just a second Got to finish up one more and then we'll be golden all right well, as you can see we've got all three of them heat uh, soldered on and they're nice nice tight connections now this one I've already slid that on uh, before I started soldering and what you want to do is on these tips there's that little little edge right there you want to bring your heat shrink straight up to that edge that way whenever you plug it into your uh, speed control there is no gap in there what we'll do is we'll go ahead and heat shrink that down and my lighter burns a whole bunch of fluid so it kind of turns it black and there you go and you'll do that for all three of them and now when you plug it in there's very little if any gap and you are ready to put this thing in the air guys if you have any questions on soldering uh, let me know if you need more detail I can get in kind of like I had to do on these bullet connectors and do you know a real real close up uh, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to make it so all right and if you uh, if you did everything correctly you're gonna have nice good uh, solder joints on your bullet connectors your heat shrink tubing hopefully is not as black as mine and your Dean's connector is gonna look all kinds of pretty and not melted thanks for watching guys